Hi, I'm Mark Fisher, and today Dr. Kumu and I are going to discuss or uh, outline some of the results uh, that appear in this uh, month's uh, protein science issue uh, entitled Probing Structurally Altered and Aggregated States of Therapeutically Relevant Proteins Using GROEL Coupled to BioLayer Interferometry. So in this uh, publication, we demonstrate uh, that we can use the chaperone and based uh, biolayer interferometry biosensor system, or the GROEL biosensor, to capture and detect the appearance of pre-aggregated uh, species, or what we call the seeds of destruction in protein solutions before large-scale aggregation sets in. So the GROEL biosensor uh, binds these partially folded proteins that have exposed hydrophobic surfaces, and this binding is easily reversed uh, using ATP or ATP osmolite solutions. And this reversibility in binding is actually a hallmark of uh, the specificity in this, or the specific binding uh, with this technique. So uh, Dr. Kumru is actually going to discuss some of the highlights uh, of this, uh, of this uh, work. So Dr. Kumru, take it away. Bioleer interferometry, or BLI, is a label-free method that can measure changes in protein interactions through changes on a fiber optic biosensor tip by monitoring changes in the interference patterns. We use the single channel blitz system for our measurements. The system sets up an interference pattern based on reflectance from a reference layer that is compared with the bio, bio layer establishing constructive and destructive interference patterns. As the sample thickness on the tip changes, resulting in a kinetic and amplitude change results in a phase shift that yields a real-time kinetic BLI sensitivity. As just one example, we use the system to detect the existence of pre-aggregates in polyclonal and monoclonal antibody solutions. We optimize the GROEL binding concentrations to eliminate nonspecific binding. An increase in signal occurs if partially folded proteins become bound to the GROEL biosensor. Alternatively, when the solution contains ligand or solution stabilizing conditions that do not bind or interfere with GROEL, this binding signal can diminish, or in cases where tight binding protein stabilizers are present, the signal can completely disappear. As just one of the many examples illustrated in this paper, as one applies moderate heat to monoclonal antibody solutions, there is a contaminant rise in signal of protein binding to GROEL. This binding is specific since ATP addition to GROEL reverses the binding and the BLI signal returns to baseline. We also demonstrate that we can use a reversible cleavable disulfide biotin linkage to the streptavidin tip where one can release GROEL antibody complexes and visualize these complexes using negative stain electron microscopy using as little as three microliters. In this EM image, one can see that protein components have become bound to the GROEL from the BLI tip and in some cases, an entire antibody molecule is present either as bound or dissociated um, from the GROEL platform. So in summary, we've been able to uh, detect pre-aggregates of three separate uh, protein solutions, uh, polyclonal antibody, monoclonal antibody, and the fibroblast growth factor prior to uh, large-scale aggregation. We plan to use this uh, GROEL BLI, BLI biosensor platform to determine if uh, early pre-aggregate uh, detection is linked to longer-term this also should allow us to identify and validate ligand uh, or solution protein stabilizers and to test our actually engineered stabilities in protein structure. And finally, our ability to visualize intermediates bound to GROEL using electron microscopy may enable us to identify regions that are particularly within antibodies that are susceptible to local unfolding uh, using a technique called uh, EM uh, single particle analysis. So with that, thank you for listening and stay tuned.